if, if you are here to celebrate Henry Butler, uh, if you're not, get the hell out of here. What are you doing? Um, I might get choked up with my couple of minutes of speaking, so if I do, well, first of all, I'm Larry Blumenfeld. I hung out with, I hung out with Henry in Brooklyn when he was first here a little. I hung out with him a lot in New Orleans when he was back there. I hung out more with him here when he was back in Brooklyn, and I wrote about him every chance I got, and I still didn't say enough. Um, if I get choked up, when I get done, when I walk away, you'll hear another brilliant pianist and singer who springs from the same well of beauty and culture and weirdness and funk and classicism as Henry did, and that's Deville Crawford. Um, yeah. So, if Henry's definitely hovering above us. He is. I know. He's looking down. He's saying, man, this looks cool. Uh, I like what I'm seeing here. And, and, and he would do that. He, I, would, I would get the other one and say, Larry, you, you look a little tired. And he, he'd push it. So it really started to get strange when I was in New Orleans at the exhibition of Henry's photography. And, and the shit was good. The shit, the shit was good. So Henry Butler was a blind man of uncommon vision. He was a blues shouter with a classically trained voice. He was a New Orleans traditional pianist who played cutting edge New York City jazz. His music kind of didn't really fit anywhere in particular because it contained everything in particular, a lot of times within the same, within one chorus. So if you were lucky enough to like cop that left hand balcony seat at Snug Harbor, you could bend over and look down and you just, you know, you'd hear. Dry, McCoy Tyner, Burns along here, Thelonious Monk, Chopin, oh, Chopin over there, Boogie Woogie. And, but it would be this big, this amazing blur. And Henry played in that blur. Henry lived in that blur. Henry would drag you into that blur. He'd hold you into that blur until you couldn't bear it anymore. Then he'd keep you in that blur a little longer so you could see what it would be like if you could bear being in that blur a little bit longer. And that's what Henry did. So, um, yeah, that's what he did. If you were lucky enough, if you were lucky enough to be at Bar Lunatico in Brooklyn, and yeah, you should. And uh, you'll hear from Richard Julian later. Last couple of years of Henry's life, you got to hear he was getting at something that was even more tender. It was even more daring. I don't know what it was, but it was starting to go somewhere. And you know, at the end, the plane was going up. That's what I want to tell you. So as much as I wrote, as much as I listened, as much as I wrote about Henry, I did not comprehend so many things about his music. As much as I got to know him and hung with him, I know there's just so much more that I can't really grasp. So uh, Henry, we hardly knew you. Yeah. Yeah.